I'm gonna get started. I like to start at least five minutes in just in case people need to get logged in or anything. So does anyone have any questions? Um, this is intro to Matt. So if you took it last week, um, I am gonna start giving this every week because I think it's a great class to understand the fundamentals of Pilates. So when we're trained in power Pilates, it's not so much to say, um, is this gonna be safe for later? Probably not. Um, I did post one last week, so I think this one, I I'll see how it goes. Um, maybe, maybe not. Probably not, though. The t they're not doing 24 hours anymore on Instagram, so that means it has to go, it has to be posted. So, we'll see. Um, but just going back to, I'm certified in Power Pilates, and if you didn't take last week, this is intro to Matt. So, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's just a more understanding way of taking Pilates. This is your heart and soul of the mat class, so understanding the combinations, understanding what you're doing, so that when you're popping into my mat with weights or popping in with my TheraBand class, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that exercise, now we're just doing it with a TheraBand. So I want you to understand why you're doing the exercises you're doing, what muscles are working, what breath is moving, um, and so on and so forth. So that's why I am doing this class from now on, probably every week. So if you wanna DM me and say, hey, this day works better for me, can we do it this day? That helps me out a lot. So just message me, put a time, put a day, and I can definitely put that into consideration when I start making my schedule every week. And also follow me because I post the schedule every week, which I did post this. Um, and then I posted another reminder late last night, so I hope everyone got that reminder. Um, okay, so we're gonna get started grabbing your towel or soft surface, just I have mine lightly rolled up. You can use a TheraBand or a magic circle. I'm going to use my magic circle, which by the way, a um, little bit of a fun fact, this mat that I'm currently on and this, ther uh, this magic circle, you can get on Dancewear Corner, and I will add that into the messages, um, and I have a collection with them. I have approved of both of these uh, tools. I love them. The mat is so pretty and it makes my mood happy, especially, you know, it's like wearing a good leotard or a good workout outfit. I like my mats being colorful because it helps with my energy. And then this magic circle is fabulous. I love the resistance. It's really sturdy. And you can go into Instagram Corner and type in the Tay Tay Valley Collection. And then also you can put in my code Tay Tay 20 and you get 20% off. So that's really a good deal because these are pretty expensive and so are the mats. So you're really gonna get a good discount. So go ahead and head over there. I'll put that in the messages right now. So everyone can see that. So that's at dance wear corner. And then code Tay, all caps, for 20% off. Okay, so that's there for you. So if you're in need of any type of tools, that's where you need to go. So head over there and you'll get 20% off if you use my code. So let's get started. All right, to make sure you can see me. Okay. So I'm gonna lie down on the mat. I'm gonna have the rolled up towel or mat underneath my lower back. And this is just to start warming up the lower back, opening the sacrum, opening the hips. You'd be surprised how everything is so connected to the lower back. So if you're feeling tight, grabbing just a little pillow or something to put on the lower back, putting your hands in a goal post position, and just opening up is so good in the morning. So try not to just go straight into something, because the lower back can get really tight if you're not ready. So just rock the hips back and forth over that little arch. Mine's got some give. It's a thick towel, but it's not that thick. I don't want it to be too hard. I just ordered one of those flat foam rollers where it curves over but the bottom's flat, so that's another good thing. Okay, so grabbing your towel, your magic circle, your TheraBand, or tights, whatever you have to stretch, just place your ball of the foot inside of the magic circle, the TheraBand, or the tights. Now again, my leg is straight, but I can do that, and if you can't, don't worry about it. This is for your stretch. So if your leg's slightly bent, don't worry about getting it straight. The object of the game is just to loosen up that hamstring, because the hamstrings, if they're tight, your lower back's gonna be tight, because a lot of pressure will go into that. So we wanna get those nice and mobile before we begin our class. So all I'm gonna do is just push down in the pad of the foot. My foot's nice and flexed, whether it's in a TheraBand, in a towel, whatever it is, and just point and flex your feet. You can even just do it behind your leg. So you can just even hold on 
if you don't have any of those. And just point, uh, demi point and flex. Demi point and flex. And you're just kind of warming up the foot, warming up the leg, warming up the lower back. It's all opening up right now. Demi and flex. Demi and flex. Two more. Demi and flex. Demi and flex. We don't want to do anything too harsh. So try not to yank anything. Try not to pull anything in any weird ways. We want to slowly work into it. Very, very important that we're being nice and gentle on our body, especially if this is our first class. Now, opening it to the side, I really want you to make sure that gravity does not take over too much and let that hip open up. We want to keep the hip nice and anchored into the towel or whatever you have on your lower back. And just like gravity take over and make sure you're being gentle. So you have support from your TheraBand or your tights or your magic circle. You have a lot of support and you want to make sure that your hip is opening up gradually, not so harsh. And then just take it up and we're going to cross it over the body. So giving it a nice IT band stretch. Very important that we're flexing that top foot because then you're feeling it into that FHL tendon and that tendon is connected all the way to your calf, your um, IT band, the knee that's connected to the lower back, the glute, the hip, it's all connected. So we want to warm that all up. And then just taking some big deep breaths, making sure we're getting that blood flow going, we're breathing into the exercise, and just come right back to your center. Getting the magic circle, whatever you have on your foot, just flex it down, driving that energy away. You should feel that one leg is a lot longer than the left. Let's bring that left leg up and get it even. So the pad of the foot comes onto that little squishy part or in the TheraBand or the tights. And then just slowly start to gradually pull. I don't like to use the word pull, but you do want to give it a stretch. But we're not yanking. We're slowly just stretching and warming up that, that hamstring, okay? Very, very important. We're nice and gentle to the body because we're about to get it going and flowing. And it just needs a little love and care before we get started. And just do a little demi and flex, demi and flex, pushing into whatever object you have, demi and flex, demi and flex, two more, demi and flex, and demi and flex. Grabbing the left hand with the, the circle or the TheraBand, let the hip open. Now again, making sure I'm not falling onto that side, my hip is driving down into the nice cushiony Circle whatever you have underneath your back. Opening up the hip, let gravity take over, but you're supported with your object. And you're gonna come right back to your center position, crossing it over the body for your IT band stretch. Really think about your pinky toes driving back towards your face. IT bands are so important, never forget about them. They're on the side, I feel like they're so neglected. So it's very important to make sure you're giving them equal love and care. And then come right back to your center position. Get rid of whatever toy you have. You will not need it anymore. That is the only time you're going to need it. And just lift up the hips slowly and re lift out of that towel or whatever you have and press your lower back into the mat. You should really feel nice and flat now. I love that feeling. All my lower, lower, middle, and upper back is just laying completely in line with the mat. All right, and let's get started. So you want to make sure you are centered from top to bottom and equally from side to side. Again, very important that we measure our bodies correctly and we start aligned because it's all about alignment and we want to finish this class at least one vertebrae taller than when we started. We're going to bring our right leg into a tabletop position. Bring your left leg into a tabletop position. Noticing that my knees are in line with my hips, it's very important that we don't go past the hips because then you lose the activation of the abdominals and your lower back goes into a tuck. We want to bring them into a tabletop position in line with the hips. That makes it harder for an activation, and then you really have to press the lower back into the mat, which already fires up the powerhouse right here. Now we're going to bring our hands at a long position by our side. Now remember, this is intro to mat, so we're not going to straighten the legs. We're going to do a very basic setup. Bringing our hands nice and long, we're going to pump our arms. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Try to pump the arms above the hips. You want to think of an upwards motion. Up, 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 up. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. As you inhale, the exhale is just as important because your abdominals are going to pull in deeper. So you go. 
my abdominals pulled in even deeper as I get, did that very big exhale. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Watch the knees, don't go past the hips. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Stop the arms, come up even higher. Pull the abdominals even deeper and rest your head down, rest your body down. Getting used to my cues, we're gonna place our hands behind our the creases of the knees and just rock up to a sitting position. We are going to do a half roll down. So this is before the full roll up. So prepping that position, we're gonna keep our hands by the creases underneath our legs. And we're gonna make a nice C curve of the spine, contracting it back to the tailbone, lowering it down, keep that C curve, come on up and sit up nice and tall. We wanna think about as we Scoop the abdominals in and up. It's like you are scooping out ice cream from a carton and that little indention is there. That's how your abdominals want to feel. You're already activating them. You're scooping them in and up. Nice big C curve. And then come right back up, keeping that C curve of the spine. Sit up nice and tall in the sits bone. Let's just do that two more times. You can extend the arms out long if you want to eat a little bit more of a challenge. And then come right back up. We want to find that little tremble in the abdominals. We're already activating and firing up our powerhouse. So coming right back, find a little bit of a tremble, come right back up. Good, let's go one more time before we do our full roll up. So we're gonna go back a little deeper. I want you to hold this position. Then I want you to activate, pull it even deeper, lower, hold this position. Find your middle back, hold this position, three, two, one, relax it all the way down. Okay, now we're gonna do a full roll up. If you would like, to straighten your legs all the way you can, but this is an intro to mat. So we're gonna keep our legs slightly bent just for a little bit more support. So my heels are really driving into the mat. My legs are glued together and I have a little bit of a light bend. I'm gonna bring my hands above the head. I'm gonna C curve the spine. Think about chin to chest. You already wanna break the neck and look into the chest. So looking down, I'm gonna keep that C curve. My legs are slightly bent and contracting it forward, hauling out the abdominals, keep the shoulders down, and then contract, roll all the way back. My feet are flexed and they're zipped together. I'm pressing my lower back into that, come right back up. Think about as your shoulder blades hit that mat, you wanna keep that contraction and keep the flow going. So we wanna come right back up. And we're breathing. So as we're down here, we're gonna inhale, roll up. Exhale, contract it over. Inhale, sitting on up, and then exhale, rolling it on down. The breath is such an important cue in Pilates because it's getting the blood flow going and it's getting your cardiovascular muscles working. So we're really going, going, going. Good, one more time. Melting the spine into the mat, thinking about your back as a wheel. You're really, really hitting each part of the spine onto the mat. Last one, and good. Bring your hands by your side. We're gonna bring our legs bent into a flat position, all 10 toes flat on the mat. If you would like a more of a challenge, extend the leg long, but like I said, intro to mat. Bring the right leg up to the ceiling. And there's nothing that is easier, it's just more of an understanding of your body and what it's doing. Keep your hands long by your side in a low V. My left leg is bent, my right leg is long. I'm gonna go in towards the body, circle, hug the midline, and find your center position. You're gonna go a big circle, down, around, and two, holding your center. Down, around, and three, nothing moves. Down, around, and four, hip in line with the toe. Down, around, and five. Now we're gonna reverse the leg, away from the body, down, around, stop at your center. And away, down, around, and two. And down, around, and three. Two more, down, around, and four. And down, around, and five. Good, now flex the foot, really drive that energy out, pushing it away from your body and draw it back in. Now we're gonna to go to the other side with the left leg up, nice long leg. We're gonna go in towards the body, circle the leg, down around, stop at your center. In towards the body, big circle, down around and two. And down around and three. Down around and four. One more, down around and five. Reverse the leg, down around, stop at your center, hugging your midline. Down around and two, no move anything in the abdominals. Down around and three, nice flat back. Down, around, and four. One more. Down, around, and five. Resting your foot, I'm oh, sorry, flexing the foot, driving it out. Long away from the body, and then draw it back in. Good, bending your legs into your chest. Just rock up to a sitting position. Next, we're gonna go into rolling like a ball. So you're gonna scoot yourself forward on the front edge of the mat, making sure you're on the front edge. 
placing the hands on the creases of your legs. All we're gonna do is break it up into a little bit of a piece. So you're gonna test your weight, point the feet, draw the heels into the bottom. Very important that we're already setting ourselves up for this exercise. Looking into your belly button. All I want you to do is rock back a little bit, finding the tremble, and come right back up. So we're not going all the way down yet. Rocking back, just the tips of the tailbone, finding that little shake, come right back up. It's a nice, fun activation of the abdominals. Rock it back a little bit, finding the C curve, come right back up. Let's do that two more times. Make sure you're rocking back evenly. Rock it back, don't favor one hip. Come right back up, shoulders are down, looking into the belly button, your heels are driving into your bottom. Come right back up. Let's do a full rolling like a ball. You're only gonna go back to the tips of your shoulder blades. So you rock right back to the tips of the shoulder blades, come right back up. Make sure you don't go past, we don't want any pain in the neck. We rock it right back and come on up. We're massaging out the spine. Rock it back, come on up. Looking into your belly button, shoulders are down. Rock it back and rock it up, nice and long. Here we go, rock it back and rock it up. Sit up nice and tall, activating the C-curve of the spine. Rock it back and rock it up. Good. And we're going to place our feet down and we're going to place our hands in front of us and we're going to roll down to a nice long position. We're going to go into our abdominal series with little rests in between. And I say little because they are little because we want to fire up the abdominal series. Now, if you were going to take an intermediate or advanced, we would not stop in between. Okay, here we go. So bring your right leg into your chest, bring your left leg into your chest, setting up for your single leg. Your knees are in line with your hip. Bring your hands nice and long behind your, uh, nice and long by your side. You're gonna pull the right leg in. As you pull it in, the abdominals pull in deeper, you come up even higher. And then we're gonna switch. Come up even higher, pull the abdominals even deeper. Now add the breath. You inhale, switch, inhale, switch, exhale, switch, exhale, switch, inhale, switch, inhale, switch, exhale, switch, Exhale, switch. Now, just because you do an exhale doesn't mean you let the abdominals go. They actually are going to pull it even deeper. That's activating the powerhouse and getting a full body workout for this next 30 minutes. Inhale, switch. Inhale, switch. Exhale, switch. Exhale, switch. Two more. And switch. Exhale, exhale. Rest the head down. Rest the hands down. Just a quick break. Come right back up. We're going to do a double leg. Now, hugging your hands on top of your shins. You're going to bring your hands out, your legs out at the same time. They rest out nice and long. You're going to hug it in like you're hugging a big beach ball. Hug the legs back in. Keep your head nice and long off the mat, looking into the belly button. Hug the legs back in. As you extend out, the abdominals pull in deeper. You're going to extend them back in. They pull it even deeper. Two more. Extending it out and hugging it in. Good. One more. Extend it out and hug it in. Rest the head, neck, and shoulders down for a tiny bit of a break before we come right back up for scissors. Bringing the head nice and long, looking into the belly button. Belly button is your best friend. We're gonna bring the right leg up to the ceiling, flexing the foot, you're gonna do a little double pulse. One, two, and switch. One, two, and switch. If you can come up higher, do so. If you have to keep the legs slightly bent, that's okay. Pull, pull, and switch. Pull, pull, and switch. Two more, and two, Last set, make sure you're double pulling and relax the head down. Placing a diamond with your hands underneath your lower back. This is great for lower lift for some support, allowing you to keep that lower back nice and flat on the mat. Bring your legs nice and long up to the ceiling and you're gonna keep the chest nice and relaxed, no strain in the neck. Lower the legs down for three, two, one, come right back up. Lower down for three, Two, one, come right back up. Don't go past your hips as you lift the legs up. Lower down for three. Two, one, come right back up. Let's reverse the counts. We go down for one, we come up for three, two, one. Down for one, come up for three, two, one. Down for one, come up for three, two, one. Last exercise, bringing your hands back behind your head. You're gonna scoop the abdominals even deeper as you lift up. And we're gonna twist to the right. We're not gonna bend the legs in just yet. So just twist, come up even higher, finding your center position, try not to lower the wing blades down. We twist to the left, pull it even deeper, and find your center. One more time each side without bending the leg. Come up even higher, we twist, 50% twist, remember that. And then center, left twist, and find your center. Let's add the leg, we bend the right leg, the left leg goes long, and find your center. We twist to the left, and find your center. We twist to the right, and find your center. One more twist 
and find your center. Let's flow it out from five, four, three, two, and one. Rest your head down and just rest everything down. And that was your abdominal series. It consists of five exercises. Good job, guys. Keep your legs nice and long on the mat. You're pressing that lower back into the mat. Bring your hands above your head and just roll up to a nice sitting position so we can transition into our next exercise. We're gonna go into spine stretch forward. So sitting up nice and tall, the legs are actually a little bit wider than your mat. You can sit on your sits bones and if you rock from side to side, you feel the bony part of your sits bones. That's where you wanna sit. That's your tallest posture. So if you're sitting at your desk or if you're you know, on your laptop, remember that we don't wanna sit back here. That's a lot of pressure on that lower back. That's why Pilates is so good for posture and lower back pain, creating that abdominal strength to hold your body up. So rocking up on those sits bones, that's where you wanna be. My feet are flexing towards my face. I have my pinky toes even flexing more than my big toes. You're gonna bring your arms nice and long, sit up nice and tall. And we're gonna contract like we're going over a big beach ball. Like I'm pulling your spine behind you, but I'm pulling my, your arms forward. And then we're gonna contract roll all the way up. And don't drop the arms. A lot of dancers, when I give the spine stretch tour, the first thing they wanna do is this. And it's not that motion, it's an up and over motion. You're contracting the abdominals back. So pushing back, stretching the spine out. It is called spine stretch forward. And then you have equal energy in those toes. Then stack your spine up like, Jeng like a Jenga piece. And then come right back, keeping that C curve, pulling the rib cage back, arching it forward nice and long. And then rolling up, sit up nice and tall. We're gonna do that two more times. Stretching it out. This is one of my favorite ones. I think it feels so good, because especially I'm hitting that middle back stretch, not so much of the upper and middle, which is a harder one to find. One more time, stretching it forward, really going past your toes, but don't collapse. Keep the ball underneath, and then roll up, sit up nice and tall, long through the crown of the head. We're gonna close the legs together, and we're gonna go into corkscrew. So just bend the legs, roll on down. Placing your hands nice and long by your side. Bring your right leg up to the ceiling. Bring your left leg up to the ceiling. And we're going to do a little bit of a challenge today, and I think we can do it. We're going to do a few normal, and then we're going to add a lift of four vertebrae. Only four. It's not that bad. We're going to circle the legs to the right, down around. Now, people like to think that this is a leg workout, and it's really a lower abdominal activation. So circle the legs to the left, down around, and stop at your center. We circle to the right, circle the legs down around, and stop at your center. How is your abdominals doing? They're nice and lifted and in and up. Circle the legs, down, around, and up. One more time each side. You'll start to hear my cues, and that'll be normal as you take my classes more often. And I'm going to say the same cues because that's how you, I can remind you to do it without me being there. Now we're going to add a little lift to the hips and then circle. So you're just going to lift four vertebrae off the floor, circle the legs down, around, and up. Try to control it as you come up. Use the momentum. Circle the legs down, around, and up. Little four, four vertebrae down, around. Circle the legs. One more. Activating those lower abs, controlling it down, around. Give me one more lift up and then lower down with control. Place your hands behind your legs and rock up to a sitting position for saw. You're going to bring your legs just hip distance apart. These are not as wide as spine stretch. You can face where you are. I'm just going to face you because I hit the wall. But you want to think about your Big toes activated, but even think about your pinky toes going towards your face. That's even more important than your big toes because that's going to give you a deeper stretch in the back of the legs. Your arms are nice and long in a T position, making sure you can still see them in your peripheral vision. We don't want them too far back. We're going to inhale, and as we inhale, we're going to exhale, twist making sure you're incorporating the breath, the breath. You're gonna inhale, dive it forward, pull it even deeper for three, two, one. Exhale, roll on up and find your center, incorporating that breath. We inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, dive it forward. The opposite sits bone stays flat on the mat. Rolling on up, finding our center position and twist. Don't forget about that back arm. It's, not, it's still there. So you're pushing up like you're trying to touch someone and then roll on up and find your center. We twist to the left. Opposite sits bone. So this one right here stays flat on the mat. You want to keep equal energy because that's going to give you that full body stretch. Come on up and find your center one more time each side. We twist, contract it forward. Opposite pinky toe to opposite pinky finger going past your toes. Don't rest it down. Come on up. One more. Twist and forward. Stretching it out nice and long. Come on up and find your center. Okay, let's go over to our tummies. So we're gonna swing our legs around, flipping over to our, summons, our tummy series. Swan prep. 
All ten toes are flat on the mat the entire time. There are three H's you want to follow, and that's head, heart, and hands. Okay, so when we're doing this, it's the beginner version. Usually the hands are not in a pillow, but for this class, they're going to be in a pillow for your forehead. So one hand on top of each other, and you're going to rest your forehead on top. And think of head, hands, heart as you lift up. So you want to think already, my abdominals are lifting in and up, like a little ant is crawling up, up underneath. You can kind of see the activation. So this is me relaxed. Now I'm really activated. I'm pulling the abdominals towards the back. And I have a pillow for my hands. I'm going to lift in and up. As I lift up, my head and hands and everything pushes up off the mat. I'm nice and long. I'm not breaking my neck. It's not about a backup. And I'm pushing all 10 toes flat into the floor. And then I'm going to resist it down. Keeping the abdominals activated the entire time. Pillow for your, for your head. Head, hands, and heart are going to lift up. My abdominals are really activated. I'm lifting nice and long, growing through the crown of my head and shooting the energy out through the toes. And then lower it back down. Let's do that two more times. Lifting up through the crown of the head. Do not break the neck. You want to keep the equal energy. My abdominals are scooping in and up. And then I'm going to lower back down one more time. Nice and long, energy shooting out. We're going to lift it up. Now, really teasing the abdominals. Don't let them go as we pulse it up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest the head down. Go back into a quick child's pose position, stretching it out. But remembering that it is an active child's pose position, so we're going to continue going right away. So walk right back to your tummy, and we're going to prop ourselves up on our forearms. You want to make sure that we're not just sitting here sinking into the shoulders. You're lifting up through the vertebrae. Your collarbones are nice and wide. You're making little fists with your hands. My hips bones are pressing into the floor. And all I'm going to think about is lifting almost just my knees. So I'm going to lift one, two, kick your bottom. One, two, kick your bottom. Making sure you're not sinking and you're one long line from the crown of the head. The hardest part is keeping those hips on the mat. I struggle with it. It's definitely one of the harder exercises for me because I have really tight quads. Good. Two more. Kick, kick, and switch. Kick, kick. Last set. Kick, kick, and switch. Kick, kick, and switch. Resting the head down. Let's go into double leg. Bring your hands nice and high. You're going to interlock the thumbs. It's going to be nice and tall on the back of your mat, or on the back of your body, kind of where the bra meets. And you're going to triple kick the bottom. And the same rules apply. So if you want to take a peek, what I don't want to see is this motion. So when you kick, you kind of kick with your, your hips off the mat. I want to see kick, kick, kick. Deeper activation. Okay, so here we go. Left cheek on the mat. We kick for one, two, three. Extend the arms, legs out together. Shoulders roll back. Switch the cheek. Other side. We kick for one, two, three. Three, arm legs extend, fingertips long, just the thumbs are interlocked, and change the space. We kick for one, two, three, pressing the hips into the mat, roll the shoulders back. Last one. We kick for one, two, three, everything extends back, nice and long, and rest your hands down, go back into a child's pose position. Stretching it out. We want to stretch the opposite way we just worked because we're keeping that spine nice and comfortable. If you notice, even when you lay on your tummy for too long, that back starts to hurt. So we want to continue that full motion, range of motion in the spine. Come right back. Just swing your legs around and let's continue on to our next exercise. Centering yourself on the mat. Again, just a little bit of reminder. You want to be centered from top to bottom, side to side. Okay, we're going to go into our side series. So lining yourself up with the back of the mat, making sure that we are on the back of the mat. I express this a lot because if you're not lined up correctly for the side series, it kind of defeats the purpose of the class, so, or of the side series. So you really want to make sure you're lined up with the back of the mat, but the feet are at the front edge of the mat. Your hips are nice and stacked. I'm already thinking about the activation of the abdominals. I have a little mouse house underneath my rib cage, and I'm going to place my hand in front of me for more support. And that's just to make sure that I'm stable during this exercise. We're going to bring that top leg up. And as we kick it, we're going to double kick. So you kick one slow. Then you pull your abdominals back even deeper, two. And then you point it to the back. Kind of think about someone kind of punching you. You're going to kick it to the front one, kick it to the front two, and point it to the back nice and long with the leg. Kick it front one, pump it back front forward two, and bring it to the back two more. One and two, and point it to the back. 
one and two, and point it to the back. A little bit of a flowy kick, kick, and bring it to the back. Kick, kick, and bring it to the back. One more kick, kick, and bring it to the back. Bring the legs together. You kind of start to feel those hips moving. So we want to really lift up through our abdominals. Now we're going to add some counts. So we're going to go three, two, one, point down for one. Really, really resist it down, don't slam it down. Up for three, two, one, point down for one. Up for three, two, one, point down for one. Last one, and we reverse the counts. Up for three, two, one, down for one. Now reverse it, up for one, down for three, two, one. Up for one, down for three, two, one. Up for one, last one, down for three, two, one. Now we're gonna do nice little circles, just five. We brush the ankles for five, and four, and three, and two, and one, reverse your circles for five, four, three, how those abdominals, two, and one, bring both legs together. We are going to kick that top leg up. You are gonna bring it to the front of you. If this is too much for you, just rest that knee down, or you can interlock your hands through. The heel doesn't have to lay flat, it's just what you can do. We're gonna work that inner thigh a little bit. So really lifting up. We're gonna think about coming up for three counts. So we lift up for three, two, one, and then resist it down. My foot is flexed and I have equal energy shooting out through my ball of my foot and to my head. Lift up for three, two, one, lower down. Up for three, two, one, lower down. Up for three, two, stay up. We pulse it up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's add our circles. We circle for five and four and three. Think of up, up, and up. Reverse, up, and up, and three, and two. And one, rest the foot down, bring the other foot down, and just lift your body up and let's transition to the other side. Working both sides equally, lining yourself up with the back of the mat and bring your feet in front of you. You are almost done, guys. Pulling the abdominals in and up, stacking your hips, little mouse house underneath your rib cage, placing your hand in front of you for stability. Bring that top leg up, let's get that resistance going. We double kick one, you push your abdominals even deeper to back, and then point it to the front, don't let that hip go, don't want to drop it, wanna keep it nice and long. Kick it one, kick it two, and point it to the back with slow and control first. Kick it one, pulse it two, and point it to the back. One more before adding a little flow. Kick it one, kick it two, and then point it to the back. Let's do a little faster. Kick, kick, and point it to the back. Kick, kick, and point it to the back. Two more. Kick, kick, and point it to the back. Last one. Kick, kick, and point it to the back. Bring both legs together. They're stacked on top of each other. We're gonna go up and down with counts. So we go up for three, two, one. Resist down for one, point the foot. Flex it up for three, two, one, point down for one. Up for three, two, one, down for one. One more, up for three, two, one, down for one. Now reverse that, we go up for one, release it down for three, two, one, up for one, down for three, two, one, up for one, down for three, two, one, last one, up for one, down for three, two, one. Circles with the foot for five, brush the ankle, four, and three, and two, and one. Reverse your circles for five, four, three, two, and one, bring both legs together, nice and long. We're gonna kick that top leg up and bring it in front of you, interlocking the ankle with your hand. Again, ah. oh, that would be Gatsby. <laughs> you don't have to lay your foot flat on the mat, that's totally okay. And we're gonna work the inner thigh. You lift it up for three, two, one, resist it down. Up for three, two, one, resist it down. Up for three, two, one, resist it down. One more. Up for three, two, one. Stay up. We pulse it up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's circle the leg for five. Big circles up for four. Think for up and two and one. Reverse for five and four and three and two and one. Relax the foot down and bring both feet together. Just bring your body up. Swing your legs around. Good, that was your side series. Let's go into our teaser. All right, so we're just gonna do three sets of three. I think we can do this. It's, it's definitely the harder exercise of Pilates. You're really, it's called teasing for reasons. You're teasing those deepest parts of your abdominal muscles, really firing up. If you hear me say powerhouse, that is the heart and soul of your core. That is how we describe the abdominal muscle. So we're really activating the powerhouse. So lying down flat on the mat, again, centering yourself front to, uh, front to back, side to side equally. 
bring your legs at a tabletop position, remembering we don't want to go past the hips. Bring your hands nice and long by your side. You're going to lift your head, neck, and shoulders high up the floor, and you're going to come on up to a nice long teaser, and then resist it down. Let's just do that three more, uh, two more times, and then that's it. Bring your body up nice and tall. You can even keep your legs bent if you need to. That's totally okay too. And come on down. We have one more, guys. Here we go. Coming up to a full teaser position, keeping your legs, if you need to, bent. Find that teasing position, and then lowering your body down, hugging your legs into your chest. Just rock your spine from side to side. That was a little bit advanced, but I wanted to throw that in there. We didn't do it last week, so if you tried the challenge, good for you. All right, good, guys. All right, rocking up to a sitting position. Let's finish for, hmm, let's go into some seal. So bring your body forward. You're gonna bring yourself to the front edge of the mat. You're gonna pray your hands. So you're gonna lace your hands through, grabbing the ankles. And you wanna find that balance like you did in rolling like a ball. Now all we're gonna do is clap the heels three times and then rock back and come up, making sure this is the biggest no-no. So I'm gonna show you the big no-no I don't wanna see is rock one, two, three, and then I see legs and everything just kind of flying back. We don't want that. We wanna keep the tightest ball position we can. It's also not a bad turnout. The knees are really tight into your body. We're gonna clap the heels for three, two, one, rock it back and rock it up. Keep the ball curved, looking into your belly button. Clap for three, two, one, rock it back, then rock it up. Let's do it two more times. Clap for three, two, one, rock it back, and rock it up. One more time. Clap for three, two, one, rock it back, and rock it up. Let's add the next clap. So you're clap for three, two, one, rock it back, three, two, one, rock it forward. Three, two, one, rock it back, three, two, one, one more. Three, two, one, rock it back. Three, two, one, rock it forward, place your feet down. Good, all right, let's end it out with some front support. So bring your legs to behind you. All right, we're gonna start on all fours. This is just prepping yourself for your planks, your front support variations that you would do in a intermediate or advanced class, okay? So already starting on all fours. My hands are underneath my shoulder blades. My abdominals are in and up and activated. I'm gonna bring one foot back, my right foot goes back, nothing changes in the body. All that's gonna change is I'm gonna bring my left foot back. So notice, nothing really shift. Make sure you're hugging the feet together, okay? And you have one long line from the crown of the head all the way down to the feet. Your head is the heaviest part of the body. So if it's looking down, you're weighing yourself down. So we wanna keep a nice long line. We're gonna hold for three, hold for two, hold for one. Place the foot down, place the other leg down. We have two more sets like that, adding on to count. So bring your right leg back, nice and long. Bring your left leg back, nice and long. We're gonna hold this position for five counts. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Bring the right leg down, bring the left leg down. Holding that control, abdominals are scooping in and up, shoulders are activated, one long line from the crown of the head. One more time, bring the right leg back, bring the left leg back. And we're gonna hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hiking the hips up. You're gonna walk back. Try not to waddle as you walk back. I'm gonna walk forward so you can see me, good. And you're just gonna peel the spine up, thinking about your head being the last part of the body that stands up. Good, and we're gonna finish with some standing series. Just one few exercise to finish out. Let me just lift this up so you can see me. Okay, remembering that a Pilates first position, it's only knuckle or fist distance apart. So that means if I put my fist on the floor, I'm gonna close my toes around the fist. That's your Pilates first, not a full turned out position. So I'm in my Pilates first position. I'm standing up nice and tall, feeling how tall I feel before the class and after the class and feeling the difference. My hands are long by my side. And all you're gonna do is do a nice releve. You're gonna lift up to the balls of the feet, finding that nice, High releve, as high as you can go. And then lower down. Now we're not just lifting up through the heels. You're lifting up through the crown of the head. Your abdominals are zipped in and up. Your powerhouse is activated. Your rib cage is closed. Inhale, lifting up. Hold your breath if you can for three, two, one. Now exhale, blow all the air out as you push the feet down. Let's do that two more times before we finish up. So inhale through the nose. Releve, nice and long. Nice high, hold for three, two, one, and then exhale, blow all the air out, every last drop. 
We have one more. Inhale through the nose, lifting up to that nice high releve. And then exhale, really blow it out. Hold it low for three, for two, for one. Roll the shoulders back. And I hope you feel one vertebrae taller than when you started. And again, something I love to say is that consistency is change. So if you keep up with these classes, you're going to start to see change. It's all about consistency. So I hope you enjoyed this class. And again, join me next week. I'll do it again. A lot of people definitely liked the intro to Matt because it gives them an understanding of what they're doing. And I hope you all had fun. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. I'm glad everybody had fun. Thank you so much, guys. Great class. Again, this will be every week. Um, and yeah, I, I might post this one. I don't know yet. I'll definitely save it and see. You're welcome, Anna. I'm glad you liked it, Anna. Good. And then I'll be posting next week's schedule. Um, I have some fun classes coming up with other accounts, so stay tuned with that. I'm pretty excited. Um, and that'll be announced with the normal ones on the ballet company, Worldwide Ballet Class, and Dance Work Corner. Those are still consistent for next week. Those never change. Uh, my intro to Matt will probably be up in the air because of what I have time to do on my account. So it's kind of just wherever I can find free space. Are you saving? I will save it. I don't know if I'm going to post it because they don't do 24 hours. Um, so I'll see if I'm going to post it after this class. Um, and then also I can teach another intro to Matt next week because I know people are really enjoying that class. And if you have any recommendations, I've, I've been doing a lot of um, Instagram classes on other accounts. But if you want something on mine and you're more consistent with my account, message me. And that gives me, it helps me a lot to understand when your good times are, when your good dates are, when you're free. If y'all want a late night class, if you want like a little bit of a stretch Pilates class, if after work, after five is better for you, like just message me and let me know. Definitely helps me out in understanding the flow of Instagram because I have, I don't know everybody's flow. So Thank you so much again, and I will see y'all soon. Does everybody have any questions? Are we all good? All right. Thank you, guys.